What is the strangest, creepiest thing that has happened to you that left you saying, what the hell was that? Posted one day ago. Went camping with school. Stayed in a fairly nice campsite in the woods. The very first night, about six of us shared a big tent and we're all laughing and joking as kids do. Then, one of the lads suddenly says, what the fuck is that? With a genuine look of horror on his face. So we rush to his side of the tent and peer out into the darkness toward the big communal campfire and I shit you not, all six of us saw what I can only describe as a pair of white legs, no upper half, walking around the campfire before vanishing. We were in shock for a while before we all collectively just laughed hysterically whilst crying inside. Still to this day, I have no idea what we saw. It genuinely looked like a pair of white trousers just walking around. I had surgery recently. I remember having a dream while under anesthesia where I was lucid and knew that my dream body was not real and that my real body was on an operating table. In the dream, I was back in my apartment and my cat kept trying to jump up on me and I kept thinking, no, you can't jump up on me because I'm actually on a table and you'll mess up the surgery. I have no memory of waking up during surgery and I have no idea how I knew, but I remember feeling a lot of distress that my cat was going to mess up my surgery. It's left me with a really bad, weird, creepy feeling even weeks later. The time I visited a nursing home with my friend so she could see her mom. We were on our way out when some old lady in a wheelchair gestured towards me and started calling me my mom's name. My mom's mom died in that nursing home and it was likely one of her friends. And I look a lot like my mom, at least when she was my age, so I can see how she'd confuse us. I couldn't stop to talk to her because the nurse saw and told us we shouldn't. At the time, I never really thought much of it because of my age. When I was around eight to nine years old, we used to live in a semi-detached house where the stairs were by the left side of the house and the neighbor's home was to the right, important for later. Another important fact that an old guy used to live there and unfortunately passed away. I made friends with the neighbor's kids because we realized we went to the same school. One day, I was walking up the stairs whilst knocking my knuckles against the wall playfully like any child would. I heard something knock back and at the time I was young, so I assumed it was the neighbor's kid knocking from the other side. I knocked again and heard the wall knock back. It wasn't until I recalled the memory and floor plan that the neighbor's house wasn't aligned with the stairs. The other side of the wall I knocked on was plain land. I tend to suffer from bad dreams, and occasionally a lucid one. I always sleep with the door open, so a bit of moonlight comes in, just enough to see a silhouette. One day, I'm in between being awake and being asleep, and there's a black silhouette of a person standing in the door opening. I start screaming like crazy, and at the same time, this person starts screaming too and runs towards me in the dark and sits on top of me. I scream even louder, almost at the brink of crying out of panic. This continues for a good few seconds until I recognize the voice. Calm down, it's me. Turns out, it's just my girlfriend, who'd gone to the toilet, tries to go back to bed as silent as possible, and is met with insane screaming. There was a debate for some time, who scared who more? When I was in high school, my family and I lived in a loft above an insurance business downtown, and it was a smallish building, small enough that there was only room for one apartment, so we were the only people living there. At the time, I would get up the earliest, so everything was pretty quiet, aside from the usual car noises from outside. One Monday, I woke up to my alarm and I thought I heard a jingling sound. I turned my alarm off and sat up in bed, listening for a few seconds, before I heard it again. I couldn't think of an explanation. I didn't have anything with bells on it that I could think of. I looked under my bed and around my room to see if anything had fallen that would make a sound like that, but there was nothing. The setup of this apartment was weird. I had to walk through my little brother's room to get to my room, and so I walked through his room on my way out to the living room and kitchen. My brother was still sound asleep, and I didn't see any toys around that would jingle like that. Upon entering the living room, I immediately noticed that the laundry room door was open, not wide open, but cracked open, enough to make it obvious. We always kept that door closed unless we were in there doing laundry. I looked around and didn't see anything out of place. When I got back from school, I asked my parents and brother if they had left the laundry room door open and they claimed not to. On Tuesday, everything was normal, but Wednesday the same exact scenario happened again. I woke up and heard unexplained jingling and found the laundry room door cracked open again. Fast forward about a year later. My mom had moved the stove for the first time since we'd lived there and we found cat toys underneath. 
cat toys with bells in them that jingled just like what I had heard before. When we initially moved in, my mom had found what appeared to be cat litter on the floor in the laundry room. She had even heard a cat meowing at one point and looked everywhere only to find nothing and assumed that it must have come from outside. After piecing all of this together though, we couldn't help but wonder if we had a ghost cat from a previous tenant living with us. Batting at the jingle toys and going into the laundry room to use the litter box, the door was open just enough for a cat to fit through. It never happened again after those two days though. Weird. A guy fishing with a fully dressed outfitted dummy. It was in Luray, Virginia, along the Shenandoah River, a pretty isolated area. We were walking our dogs and passed two guys at River's Edge fishing, not that unusual, until I realized that one of the guys was in reality a dummy mannequin fully dressed in a fishing outfit. Its arms were out, rigid, holding a fishing pole. I totally freaked out internally, but kept telling myself I must be imagining it. I didn't say anything to my husband because I didn't want to draw the attention of what might be an absolute lunatic. As soon as we got past them, my husband, the most level-headed guy in the world, looked at me and asked if I'd seen the guy fishing with a dummy. Cue internal screaming. This was just this morning and supremely creepy, so why not? My husband and I woke up around 6am to the sound of a sick cat yowling. If you've had a cat, you know exactly what kind of awful sound that is. It's a windy and storming all night, so this was loud enough to be heard over the tail end of the frozen mix. One of our cats is sound asleep at the foot of our bed. After confirming, yes, we both heard the noise. He asks whether I want to check on our kid or the other cat. I opt for the other cat. The kitten is sleeping in my chair and not pleased about being checked. Our kid is also sound asleep, not making awful sounds. I can't explain it. We both heard it. We lost one of our cats to a heart defect with a rapid deterioration. That low, pained yowl is a sound we definitely both know. It's living creature sound, and it sounded like it was just outside our door. We both woke up in a cold sweat. It's possible that we both had a nightmare and woke up at the same time. The one thing I do know is that it was absolutely not how I wanted to wake up today at all. We've definitely been pondering what the hell that was on and off all day. My friend and I were driving on a freeway when we both felt a random jolt run through our bodies. At first, I didn't realize my friend had felt it and kept it to myself. When I say jolt, I don't mean the car or seats shook and we felt a vibration from it. I mean we individually felt an isolated vibration, separate from anything else, move through our bodies. After that sensation, everything around us felt different. I mean, everything looked the same, but we still couldn't shake the idea that something major had changed about our surroundings. That something was suddenly very wrong, unnatural, and we experienced genuine fear for our lives like something was after us. It even took weeks for the sensation to slowly go away. I realized my friend had experienced the same thing when I looked over nervously and saw that she was gripping her steering wheel tightly, finally asking, what was that? This was back in 2014 and we still talk about it to this day. I guess we'll never know what happened, but I'm open to theories. Someone once suggested that we drove through some kind of chemical agent or a pocket of natural gas without knowing it. I was on a volunteer fire department and we were called out to a single vehicle rollover. There were two occupants in the vehicle, a guy and a girl, boyfriend and girlfriend, and the girl was very much dead when we got there. We waited with the guy on the tailgate of the vehicle until the ambulance arrived and stabilized him for transport to hospital. While we were waiting, he explained that they were sitting side by side, cuddling as they drove and sharing Mike and Ike's between each other's lips while kissing. The next day, the fire department had a debriefing meeting to check in on one another after such a stressful event. This one guy starts explaining a recurring dream he had where the girl who died in the crash was trying to get his attention to explain what had happened, how they had a candy between their lips kissing. He didn't even know what Mike and Ike's were, but kind of explained that the, they were like candy Tic Tacs that were longer and started with the letter M. When one of us suggested Mike and Ike's, he exclaimed, that's it, that's what she was trying to tell me. This freaked the hell out of me. The guy was on tragic duty for this call and was easily more than 500 yards from the scene of the accident. There were only three firefighters at the actual scene, I being one of them. Because the accident was late in the evening, we didn't debrief immediately after because everyone needed their sleep. There was no way Buddy could have known this intimate detail of the crash. It was all unexplainable and easily the eeriest thing that I have ever experienced. I was walking my dog one day in the park. 
The park is pretty big, with a lake and the part where the path leads through the woods. Me being a dumbass, I forgot it was getting dark early, but I decided to continue walking. My dog is pretty pig and protective, so I felt safe enough. She was walking loose ahead of me. Her collar has red lights in them. When we turned the corner through the woods, it was getting darker and darker. And even though I know the park like the back pocket, I turned on the flashlight of my phone. Anyway, a few minutes go by, just silence. Sounds of my footsteps and the wind in the trees. When my dog suddenly started growling, I stopped. She's standing a few feet away, just a ring of red lights staring at the trees. I call her and she's by my side in a second. I don't know why, but I dismissed it as a dumb doggy behavior like smelling a rabbit or whatever and kept walking. Very stupid, I know. So, we kept walking, dog by my side, my flashlight in front of me. We turn another corner and my dog is growling again. This time I freak out a little and look around me with the flashlight. Nothing. It was just a minute of walking before the path led us back into the park. I could make a run for it, but I had this weird feeling. So I took a few steps forward and saw someone standing a little away on the path, just standing there, like they just appeared out of nothing. It was weird, and I immediately felt nauseous. My dog starts full on barking, growling, back hair standing up. She's a very social dog, even with complete strangers, so this had to be bad. Her barking kind of shocked me into moving. The moment I grabbed her to turn around to make a run for it, the figure stepped forward. I never ran so hard. I ran all the way back to the little bridge that connected the neighborhood to the park. My dog was still with me, thank God. The moment I got home, I called the local police and asked them to check it out. They didn't take it that seriously because nothing bad happened, but they sent a car over. They found nobody, of course. I slept badly that night and it took me a while to walk there again, even in daylight. I took a nap in the evening, and when I woke up, I felt the urge to look at my hand. I did so and was absolutely panicking. It looked like some glitched video game item that wasn't rendered properly and is now a pixely, unfinished neon mess. I just froze and couldn't even scream before I blacked out. Woke up and everything was fine. I wasn't on meds, sleep deprived, or had a sleep paralysis since I could move. I have no idea what the heck happened and can't find an explanation for what happened. Some guy tried to kidnap me at a McDonald's in the Hamburg train station. It totally sucked. I was trapped, sitting at this booth while this guy who sat across from me told me he was going to follow me to my train and take me away to marry him in Ghana. I was totally alone. No one was going to come. I tried to tell him to leave, gave him the cold shoulder, told him to fuck off, told him I had friends meeting me there. I was scared. He was going to follow me, so I stayed sitting in the seat with his evil, creepy fucking face staring at me for what felt like forever. Luckily, a policewoman came into the McDonald's asking about a backpack left outside. I jumped up and pointed at him and told her that this man is threatening to follow and kidnap me. She brought over two giant police officer dudes to give him a talk and I hightailed it to my train. The weird part was I was the most scared telling the police on the guy than I was the whole time the guy was making threats. While I was on the train, I kept thinking, what the hell just happened? When I was at my wife's parents' house, she was in her bedroom, in her room, and I was on the bed and whistled and heard someone whistle back from outside of the room. Nobody in the house admitted to the whistling, and it sounded like it came from upstairs since her room is next to the stairs. I was later told it was her dad's mom, and she used to do that with him and his brothers when they were little in order to find them. This was told to me after I was having a conversation with my father-in-law and felt someone blow on my ear. And at the same time, he looked past me to the side of my head where I felt the air blow and said he saw her do it. It was a nice and sunny day by the sea at our summer cabin. My cousin and I took grandpa's boat and went exploring a bunch of islands nearby. We live in a place with a bunch of archipelago. After a while, we get to this island a little further out. We cruise along the shoreline when we notice a small opening, just big enough for our boat to fit through. It was definitely man-made so we decided to check it out. After about 50 meters or so, sorry Americans, I'm European, we arrive at a pond, and it's almost perfectly round. At the other side of the opening, a canal, we see an old gazebo that's barely standing. We get to the middle of the pond, and then we notice it. Every sound we heard earlier has gone quiet. No seagulls, no wind, no natural noises. The only thing we can hear is the sound of us rowing. I can only describe the lack of sound as thick silence. It was weird. Of course, the sun vanishes behind some clouds 
and suddenly the pond seems extremely dark, although it was very shallow. We were trying to joke about ghosts coming to get us, but both of us were clearly nervous. Out of nowhere, a plank in the gazebo falls from the roof and lands with a loud bang on the floor. We nearly jumped out of our skins. We both decide it is time to go, turn the boat around, and I start rowing. We were almost at the opening again when we hear what sounded like groaning and thumping coming from the gazebo. Keep in mind, I was facing the gazebo while rowing. I saw something move behind it, but I couldn't make out what it was because I was panicking. When we got out back to the regular world, everything was normal. Wind, birds, natural sounds, even the sun came back. We have no idea what the hell happened back there, and it could very well have been some animal, but the whole place felt wrong, and wind doesn't stop because of a nearby predator. Someday, we'll go back again and see what happens. I was at work, heading into my bar. To get to the bar, I had to take a freight elevator down. There was a man with a trench coat just staring at the wall. I didn't think much of it, so I just entered the elevator and closed the door. Mid-elevator ride, the man lets out a creepy laugh and jumps and faces me and says, You have sealed your fate. I'm thinking to myself, what the f is this? Am I on camera or am I going to get stabbed? So I proceeded to grab my knife out of my pocket, but the man said, Hey, have you ever played Resident Evil 4? I let out a nervous laugh and said yes. He apparently was quoting a line from the game. Weirdest thing ever. Good thing I didn't pull out my knife. <laughs>